here with Alisa Schaefer. Schaefer, oh my, I didn't, because I was, I just asked her how to say her last name and gone. Um, and I'm so excited to have you here because through, you know, divine intervention, somehow we met on a, on a Facebook group and uh, we discussed you coming on this podcast. And I'm so fascinated by what you do and how you're doing it. And I, I can't wait for you to explain everything that you've got going on because you've got some serious, amazing stuff coming down the pipeline. And I'm so excited for you. And this really just, it resonated with me on a heart level, simply because of my, my childhood growing up with horses. My grandparents had a farm and we had 40 Clydesdale horses and they were always my connection. And I actually felt I connected better to horses than I did to most of my family. So <laughs> it's, it's interesting after we talked about what you do, I was like, that makes so much sense to me and how you're using what you do to help within the mental health industry is, is amazing. I, I want to come and visit you because I want to do it with you too. So Please explain do. what it is you do. I don't want to give anything away. This is, this is your show. <laughs> well, thank you so much. I'm really excited to be here and to talk about it. It's still such an emerging field. It's not, it hasn't totally, uh, you know, taken over the world yet, but it's definitely a new way to revamp life coaching and supporting other people. Um, and it's also another way to kind of hold space for horses in the world. They're always known to us as workhorses, you know, they've always been transportation or um, gone into battle with us or, you know, they're in movies all the time, like there's acting horses out there, but not oftentimes are they seen in sort of more of a spiritual realm and all the things that they have to teach us in our conscious world and in our evolution as, you know, humans on this planet. So they have a lot to teach us. They're very wise animals. Um, so what I do is I partner with my herd of horses. So I'll give you guys a little background actually before I dive into yeah. that. So I found my way to horses through um, a very long, hard, painful journey. I went through um, a long period of my life where I was experiencing kind of like a spiritual bypassing, sort of not really doing the inner work, but I was doing the spiritual practices. So I don't know if you guys have talked about that on the show before, but spiritual bypassing is very, very profound. And it's really common in sort of the coaching and healer and light worker world. Everyone's like, I'm enlightened and I'm a guru. And meanwhile, they're like not actually doing any inner work. And so I'm guilty of that. I owned a yoga studio and I was married with two kids and um, just kind of more in it for like, you know, the physical body. And I thought that I was practicing mindfulness at that time and taking care of my health, but um, it's sort of plummeted. I kind of hit a rock bottom, I call it in my life. And I realized how inauthentic I'd really been. I, I had all these things I wanted to do that I wasn't doing. And my, I was suppressing a lot of emotions from my childhood, a lot of wounds, and um, I was burying a lot. And so when I finally decided to listen to that inner stirring, I was attracted to horses and I never knew what it was because I didn't grow up around them. So I was like, okay, what's going on? Why do I find these creatures so amazing? Let's take Western riding lessons and figure out if there's something here. And that just kind of morphed into this beautiful transformation that I've had with my horses and um, we've been able to offer our clients. And so I took a training because I was like, I've got to be able to offer this work to the world because horses being prey animals are extremely intuitive and they need to read our energy like they what they do is they feel reflect and respond as where we think rationalize and problem solve we're like way up here in our head right listening to that critical tape in our mind and analyzing everything and horses are like all about your gut intuition they feel what someone's intention and energy is and then they'll respond accordingly through body language and so i as the facilitator translate that communication whether it's energetic or body language with my clients so um a huge piece to this work around that is when you step out into a pasture with the horses or even virtually through COVID, we've all kind of shifted. A lot of us Equus facilitators have shifted through like Zoom sessions, virtual sessions. And we've, um, you know, gone out there and, and you kind of go out there with an intention and sort of like a, you talk and you sort of unpack and you ask powerful questions because that's the job of a coach. But there's something deeper that happens with horses because they don't have agendas. They don't have biases. They don't have an attachment to the outcome. They don't have egos. To them, it's just they're being authentic. They're just looking at what you're emitting out there in your energy field, and then they're responding. And so it's pure, instant, immediate feedback. And because there's no judgment, 
There's no ego. There's no reason to feel unsafe with the reflections from a horse because they're not judging you. They're just reading and saying, oh, there's something going on within you. You're incongruent somewhere. And so I talk about incongruency a lot in my work because what that means is when like um, you're putting on a mask, you're wearing a face, you know, I call the masks all the time, but you're hiding something, you're suppressing something, you're not dealing with something, but your body is, your energy still has that field. It's still in your energy field. That's what horses read and respond to. So it's pretty powerful work because a lot of times we put on our face, we go to work, we raise our kids, we're happily married, we put on this front face, we try to keep up with the Joneses. Meanwhile, horses are like, oh, that makes me super uncomfortable that you're acting like that because that's not what I'm telling on the inside. And so then they respond and it's, it can be, um, it can actually hurt your feelings a little bit when that happens because a horse will be agitated from you and walk away. But then that's where you get to get curious and go, well, why is the horse walking away from me? Because if they feel safe, they don't walk away. They come to you or they, so it's really getting in tune with who you are in mind, body, and spirit and aligning yourself into your truth and really unpacking all those masks and false self beliefs that we carry around. So it's really profound work. I think I just rambled, but. <laughs> oh, that was amazing. And it's so true because as humans, we often put on this brave face and things get buried and mm -hmm. we don't recognize them as being problems until they kind of just explode out. And yeah. then all of a sudden you're like, whoa, where'd that come from? Because we, we yeah. tend to either deny or yeah. we tend to bury it because we just can't process it at the time and so it's it's familiar to us and those who have had those packed bags <laughs> of knots whatever we want to call them inside yeah. of us and yeah. then when we all of a sudden have to deal and cope with those and we kind of have to unpack the suitcase so to speak and we see all of it in front of us, we kind of think, oh, all right, I was caring a lot. Okay, yeah. now I see it. And so in, in connecting to an animal like that, it, it's really just, it, it's almost like looking in the mirror, I would imagine. That's actually, they say that horses are a mirror to your soul. That's actually a, an expression. I think Winston Churchill said that one, but yeah, it's actually so true. So that's what I, how I word it with my clients is like, you catch a glimpse of yourself through the eyes of a horse because they are like little energy sponges. So whatever you're putting out, they absorb and they act out. And oftentimes it's with increased enthusiasm because it's like so immediate and they can't hold all this crazy energy and all what's going on within us. And they're like frantic and acting it out. And then all of a sudden you're like, Oh, I get it. Like, cause that's the whole point of the process is I'm walking my clients or people through this, like what the horse is mirroring and what the horse is communicating back, whether to us with body language or within the herd, because they usually respond within themselves too. It's so interesting to watch what happens when you go out there with somebody and the horse is responding to them and the person's like, what's going on? And all of a sudden they're like, asked, they're invited into a space of like, okay, that's actually about me. I have to take ownership of that. So there's the piece of taking ownership of your shit sorry, part of my language, but you have to take ownership. You have to be really real and you have to get authentic, right? And you have to like say, okay, it's time for me to actually look at this. And sometimes things will come up that people have been repressing for so long that they don't even remember. And it could be a childhood wound. And then that's where you would get a therapist involved or someone in a different, you know, within their scope of practice. But a lot of times it's limiting beliefs and wounds and fears and insecurities that are holding us back and, and not allowing us to, you know, birth that person that we are on the inside in our core and not who we are in our mental space or in our physical bodies, but who we are on a soulful level. And that's where horses are like, here, I'll show you who you truly are. And I'll show you what you need to unpack along the way. And I'll, I'll ride with you. Like it's a journey that you ride together. It's so powerful and so beautiful. And you're forced to sort of look at who you really are because you're looking in the mirror and then you work at building that and you take the work from the pasture into your life and you put it into your professional and personal relationships. All the things that you practice with the horse, like setting boundaries, like learning to read energy, like learning to speak your truth and ask for your needs to be met and all the little things that we don't realize that are hindering us in our life come out in the pasture with a 1200 pound animal. And they're such gentle creatures, like they, they're not out to ever get us, they're ever, they're prey animals, right? They're more afraid of us than we are of them. 
So you don't actually have to worry about going out there and just being kicked and reared. People are afraid of horses and that's a pure fear. I think it needs to be addressed. But when you go out there with the sense of like, I'm safe and this is a safe place and, and you know, your facilitator and your coach, whoever you're working with, hopefully me, is setting that space up for you, then you can actually just allow yourself to really kind of take off that veil and that you can unbridle yourself from all those things and you can just be, it's very emotional a lot of times, a lot of profound stuff happens, lots of tears get shed because it's just so real and raw. But in an hour and a half session or in a four pack or in six months, whatever purchase you end up buying, but whatever container, um, the work that happens and the transformation is just, it's so profound. It's so beautiful. So I'm so excited to be sharing this work with people because I think for mental health purposes, it's like way up there for you. You, should go, you definitely go find yourself someone who does Equus coaching or Equus facilitation or F1 guided. You know, there's a few different fields of, and names out there because it's still so emerging, but definitely check it out for mental health. It is so powerful. It has changed my mental health big time. I would imagine that I, we are, uh, let me try this again. <laughs> we are often afraid to look inward because sometimes we're afraid of what we're going to find. And, yes. and that can look at all different kinds of ways. Um, but most times it's, we're afraid to face ourselves or we're, we're afraid to face perhaps the things that are not so likable about mm -hmm. ourselves. And to be able to do that in a space, like you said, with, with an animal who's not judging you in any way, that's a huge difference for somebody to take a step and to make that, that step towards healing. Sometimes as a human, you're afraid to go to another human for fear of judgment. That's a, that's a huge thing that we all um, of course. contend yeah. with. And so you know, perhaps the first step for people who might be afraid of that is to try something like this because animals don't judge. No, no, it's unconditional. And the thing with judgment in humans is like, that's a part of our human experience. We as humans all have egos. We all have our own filters from our childhood and our experiences and, you know, our values and our beliefs. Like it's inevitable that we're going to be um, judgmental. So even as the most profound practice gurus <laughs> in the world they still have an ego and they still have a bias and they still have a judgment and their own lenses that they see the world and every experience and person through as we're animals yeah they don't have that part of their brain it's just not it's it's just not there they don't have that same human aspect that we do so it's very pure mirroring and i think it's just so profound that um, I mean, I, I still am such a believer in talk therapy. I don't think that seeing a counselor take the gates, you know, the work that they do by any means, but it's just so pure and it's such a safe space to see what it is that maybe you're in denial of wanting to see. And then what you choose to do with it, you know, if you're like, okay, I'm ready to do the work on this, or maybe you're not ready. And it's something that you can take to a counselor and unpack and talk therapy and then always come back. But it's pretty addicting when you hang out with a horse and you see those reflections and you're challenged to show up as the most authentic, best, highest version of yourself. And you build that sort of trust and all the things that you have no idea are going to unfold and what are, what's beneath the surface and those deeper currents of energy within us. It's just, it's addicting because it's like, oh man, this is powerful. And yet it's safe and it's pure. There's no, there's no, um, there's no attachment to the outcome with the horse. They're not like, oh, I want this client to come back next week. Or, you know, like they, they need to get this message. I want them to hear this. And they also don't, you can't script a session with a horse. I can't go out there and be like, okay, I have this client coming with this issue. I need you to show up like this. It's so real because you go out there and what happens happens and you trust that that's what's meant to happen. And those are the moments where people are like, I had no idea. It's just so beautiful. So, yeah. Well, it, it kind of makes me think about how people use animals as like support, emotional support animals, because we find these connections with animals and for everybody, it's, it's a different animal. And we, we form this bond or there's some kind of connection and you can't explain it, but there's just something there. And I think you're right. I mean, horses have always had sort of a, a spiritualness to them, which yeah. we see in a lot of, of um, indigenous works yeah. and, and stuff that there is a basis to, to horses and how 
they have always been connected to humans in a way. And I imagine that it must be so freeing to finally be able to be yourself. Like for, for people to go to you yeah. and sort of unpack those things and to get that, even if it's just a hint at first of what that true essence of a person is, because that's the start of any journey is sort of getting that little ping of hope of whatever it is, that driving force that's going to help you move forward. And when you can make a connection with an animal and know that there's unconditional love. And the thing that I find with animals too, is they force us to be in the moment. Oh, hundred percent. All presence. You have to have awareness, especially with horses because they're 1200 pounds. So if you're not in the moment and totally present, you could get hurt. So that's a whole nother aspect to their teaching is like, they invite you totally into learning how to be within your body, within your mind, within your spirit, all at the same time. So talk about an, an invitation to alignment, right? It's like they teach you to be for your safety, for their safety, because their safety is, uh, sorry, your safety is your responsibility. It's not the responsibility of a horse. Mm-hmm. So you need to be yeah, grounded, totally present and in the moment, not tripping out on the past or projecting into the future. So what we call that in the horse industry is back to grazing. I think, uh, I want to say Linda Cajon. Kohonov, I think that's her name with the Tao of Equus, great book. Um, she coined that phrase and it's such a great phrase because when a horse is grazing, they're at their most natural, calm, trusting, present space. That's when they're like completely in alignment because they're just grazing softly, calmly with their herd. It's when they're alert and all the other heightened stuff is when we have all the other teachings from them. So we have a tendency to live in the past and project into the future. And horses are like, nope, right here, right now in this moment. So it's pretty, yeah. pretty cool teaching. Yeah. Yeah. Animals tend to deal with things as they happen yeah. and yes. they forget about them. Exactly. And I sit in my cat all the time who falls off the counter and then accidentally <laughs> happened. Yes. I'm laughing, but he's like, what? <laughs> I don't know. I'm just fine. Didn't even know what happened. Like over it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. I, th- there's so many lessons we can learn from animals. I mean, I find gratitude. I learn gratitude from animals yeah. as well, right? When you have a connection with them and they rely on you and you rely on them and they look to you for shelter, food, whatever it is that you're providing for that animal. There's this amazing, just a sense of gratitude that comes from them that you develop these relationships and there's just something so pure and innocent about that that it's if only we could take that and form it into our human relationships yes well that's the lesson really that is the, that's the hardest part is like who you are at your most authentic core self and especially who you are with children and animals and elderly, like people that are vulnerable, right? Who you are as a person at those moments is who you should be in your professional and your personal relationships all the way around. But we tend to put on our best behavior for people we hardly know. And also, you know, for, I know for me, like when when kids and pets are around, my voice gets kind of high pitchy, you know, I'm like, Oh, hi, you kind of do that. And it's like, oh, look at this soft, sort of silly, playful side of me. Why aren't I like this in my business? Or why aren't I like this with my boss? And it's like, oh, you know, and oh, I get my defense up with my ex-husband. Like, why aren't I more silly and playful? Whoever I am at those soft core moments is who I want to embody and be. So it's such a, it is such a beautiful teaching because it's like who you are with, the, with a horse or with your children or whoever is who you should be at work and in your marriage. And, you know, that's fascinating. That's true. I've never thought about that. Yeah. Although I'm not sure anyone would want me to talk to them the way I talk to my animals. (laughs) (laughs) That's a good good truth. I could, uh, there's some truths I wouldn't want people to hear my squealy, you know, oh baby, like, (laughs) I get that. Yeah. (laughs) But there's something to be said for that too. When we think of, of any profession, when you're able to bring that level of just awareness of self, awareness of of the moment and and that pure authentic soul-based living then that energy also quite naturally would just spread so anybody who's in sales or marketing or anybody who has presentations and they're having to you know i don't want to say fight for i know what you mean yeah yeah, fight fight for an account or you know to get somebody's sell or fail yeah you know when we're our most authentic 
is when those things naturally transcend. They do. You attract when you're vibrating up here, you attract stuff up here and life is going to knock us down here. That's going to happen. Bad stuff is going to happen and you're going to come back down to a lower vibration, but you just have to do the practices to bring yourself back up. You've got to raise your vibration to be able to lift, you know, yourself, your life, your everyday, your relationships. And then that ripples out into the world, like you're saying. So yeah, it's, it's been profound. And I've suffered with mild depression. Like I, I can think all the way back to when I was 15 I actually just shared a video two days ago on my personal page on Facebook uh, where I shared my suicide attempts and I've never talked about them publicly before. And I just talked about them for the first time the other day. Um, and it was, it relates again back to living an inauthentic life. And that's where my depression kind of stemmed from. And so I think that's been why the forces draw me in so much. And they've been such a powerful tool in my healing journeys because they forced me to be authentic. And now I don't feel that same sort of depressive pattern and those thoughts anymore. And so um, that's what I'm hoping to help people through. It's like whatever you're, because I think a lot of stuff when we suppress it, like we were talking about before, it manifests in your life as physical pain, illness and disease, dysfunction in your relationship, toxic habits, addictions, so many different things. And so when you start to really look at the root of what those are, it, of, it often, and I mean like seriously often stems to not living your authentic self. So whether that's a childhood trauma that again needs to be addressed or, you know, maybe you haven't spoken your truth in your marriage and so you're coping by something else. Like, I, I don't want to speak for people, but I just mean those moments when you have an opportunity to be your truest, truest self, that's what's going to make you healthy and that's what's going to bring you balance and that's what's going to bring you joy and success in life. So go to those moments, even if it means uncomfortable conversations or setting boundaries with people or, you know, doing the inner work and unpacking the wounds. Like, it's, yeah, being your truest self is, is so, so powerful and it's totally changed my life completely. So that's so amazing because we've talked about it in, in other podcasts as well that disease or dis ease, yeah. it comes from that place of not being comfortable and, and not being authentic, like you said. And so there's something that ruminates because there's things in your body that don't don't work as well when you know we're we're putting energy out there that isn't healthy that we're vibrating at such a low vibrational frequency that that's when we it, it becomes a vicious cycle we're not yeah. sleeping well by not sleeping well then we're not reacting as well to whatever life is throwing at us yeah. and so then you get into this vortex of stuff that keeps happening and it just builds and builds and builds and builds and builds until finally something has to give. So the, the funny thing is, is if, if we all just kind of said, you know what, we all have baggage. I need to go check mine. Yeah. <laughs> right. Yeah. But we tend to not want to, we tend to fear it. It's a fear and, and yeah. rightfully so. Sometimes yeah. we don't, we don't want to see what's buried under there. You know, we've forgotten it for a reason or whatever yeah. the case may be, but life has this funny way of saying, huh, you can bury it all you want, but guess what? When you least expect it, I'm going to throw it your way and you're going to have to catch it. And you know, if we stopped fighting that, Mm -hmm. And we just sort of sit in the moment of having to accept whatever it is and know that no matter what it is, we will get through it and that we have these, these resources and these options and these things that are out there to help us through it and people who have been there and who have gone through that journey. Yeah, exactly. Right? Yeah. And which is amazing what you can do in your profession because you yourself have been through many things. Yeah. And so to get yourself to the point where you're at that now you're, you've created this business that is a passion for you and that you can identify where these people are coming from because you have been in the trenches at some point yourself. Yeah. yeah. And horses really, you know, you people, I, a lot of people say, Oh, I'm so glad you found horses. And it's like, I, horses found me actually. They found me. They called my soul my whole life. I, you know, I had posters, went to camp as a kid and I never, I never understood the calling and now that I'm partnering with them and helping other people through these profound transformations, it's like, ah, <laughs> I get it. I get it now. It's, it was always meant to be, there was always a, a purpose there. And it's really been quite, it's, I feel so grateful that I get to do this. I get to work with my horses and help other people and health and wellness and, you know, authentic living and, um, 
launching their first equine business too. Like I'm, I'm doing my very first facilitation certification program in August and I'm teaching other people how to do this work. So I'm really, really excited about that program because it's my first one. We're calling it a beta round. So it's kind of like beta testing. Um, but it's re- I'm so excited. I, I can't even believe I've, I've created a program that's based on my journey and, and you know where I am in my life now and being able to help other people through it. So, so excited. Oh, I'm so excited for you. And I'm thinking right now, one of my best friends who I've been friends with since I was 15, she has always been all about horses. And she has sworn up and down that, you know, she like, well, <laughs> she says it, I like animals more than people. And she's always had the beautiful connection to, to horses throughout her life. And I'm thinking this would totally be up her alley to take some sort of certification. Yeah. Like this. I'm going to have to connect the two of you. Yeah, like that would be if it might be something that she wants to investigate just to help her own life. But two, yeah. I can totally see this being, being her jive. Yeah. Yeah. It's pretty special when you think about, like I've been on this entrepreneur journey for over 13 years. And, um, like I, I was a yoga teacher and then I owned a studio and then I was a certified or a, like I've got my diploma in holistic nutrition. And then I went, I did holistic nutrition and lifestyle coaching. Like it's kind of always been this long journey of helping other people on their health and wellness journey, but all in mind, body, and spirit. And, um, this has just felt like the, the puzzle piece that was always missing. Like, you know, being able to tie in horse wisdom and the way of the horse and the wisdom that they have from traveling on this planet with us and watching our human evolution over the years, because they haven't changed. We've domesticated them a little bit more, but a horse is still a horse as where we have evolved like rapidly over the years and they've watched that journey. And so they have so much to share with us. And it has been um, such a blessing to be able to offer that to other people and say like, if you're called to horses, you want to help other people and a holistic way like come and take this certification program and you don't have to own a horse to take the program um you will have to do practicum sessions so you know you can go to a boarding facility though and a lot of people are this is such an emerging field that really you can find work anywhere and you just practice and you just practice listening to your intuition because that's what the beautiful piece of the prey animal and what they're one of their biggest teaching is they teach us how to listen to that um the, our intuition and our instincts and there's quite a large piece around intuitive awakening when you work with an animal especially a horse so um, you know, watching people go through their own journey of learning to awaken their intuition and then moving to, uh, learning the language of horses and then launching their business. I'm just so, so excited. I'm so excited to welcome people into the space. I can't imagine what will unfold. It's a nine month container and it's going to be broken down into three portals. Um, the first one's all about mind, body, and spirit and getting yourself ready to absorb all this new information you're going to learn. Second portal is all about the horses. And then the third portal is all about your business and launching your equus business. So oh, kind of like a full package. Yeah. I'm putting like all of my $70,000 of trainings and mentors and coaches and years and money into like a nine month space and then like sending people out into the world with their own little toolbox. So I'm so excited. Oh, I'm so excited for you. Now, in your journey, you, you had mentioned yoga and nutrition. Do you still sort of dip into those areas with what you're doing now with the horses? Not so much in with clients. Like if somebody's coming to me, it's, it's so specific. That's the beauty of holistic nutrition is it's like all about the individual. It's not a one size fits all approach, health and wellness. So it depends on what it's really client led. So if someone says, you know, like, you know, I'm not feeling very healthy. How do I get my health on track? I feel like that's a part of my truth is that I don't take care of my health or whatever their story is, then we will totally address it. But I don't ever say like, you know, okay, you should be practicing these yoga poses and you need to be eating these foods. It's really based on the individual's client's needs and goals. So, but absolutely we have touched on it and we definitely will in this program because I believe everything we feed ourselves in mind, body, and spirit, like how we, however we nourish, you know, taking in news, people we interact with, what kind of practices, spiritual practices we're doing, the foods we are eating. Like I think all of that, how we cook the food, if we're angry when we're chopping it up and then we feed it to our family, that's the vibe everybody puts in their body. So it's all about like how you cook your food, prepping it. It's just really learning, bringing you into a space of like, compassion and kindness and love and presence like you mentioned being in the moment when whenever whatever you're doing the mindfulness piece of the yoga is what i teach on a full-time basis because I, that's the most powerful teaching i think from from yoga i ever received after you know 20 years of practicing so yeah yeah 
Amazing. It makes me think, you know, how many times we've heard people say, oh, it, it's baked with love or yeah. you know, it's made with love. Yeah. I never thought about that, that, you know, how, how we cook something can definitely change the energy and how we ingest it as well. So, yeah, definitely. but I hope that if you're at a restaurant, that cook is happy. <laughs> <laughs> yes yeah it's the same feeling as like you hope that they clean the, the stove or whatever right like it's the same I always go in with the attitude of like if I'm going to sit down and place an order I'm going to order it with love so that it's received with you know to them with love and then they're going to cook it with love I just try to put that out there <laughs> I love that <laughs> I'm so glad we connected and you know, I, mean, I believe in in everything happens for a reason there is no coincidence and yeah. From the, the first time we talked, I'm like, yeah, this is totally my, my thing. And just hearing the way you speak, I'm like, I could listen to you talk all day just because it resonates so well with me and yeah. my own journey and, you know, wishing that I had something like this because I think I could have benefited from yeah. what you do as well, just because oh. of my connection with animals in general. And it's just, it's fascinating from a perspective of, of, you know, this wellness journey and going from mental illness to mental health mm -hmm. and how people can take that journey. And just like there, it's almost unending the options that are out there to help people. Yes. And yet it's not known by people. Yeah. Those things are out there. And this is why I'm doing the podcast. It's to be able to present these things to people so that they know they've got all these great, amazing options. It might not work for one person, but it can certainly work for another. And yeah. then there's other things that will resonate better with somebody else. And that was kind of how I started my, my wellness journey is I, I agreed that, you know, I was no longer going to make this part of my story that I, I needed to finally sort of dive in and do what I needed to get well. And it was a journey of, okay, let's try yoga today. All right, let's try tapping. All right, what's next, right? And so I was willing to try anything and everything, for the most part, <laughs> to, to see what worked for me. And yeah. in the process, one, I learned so much about me. I learned so much about what is out there. And even if it didn't necessarily work for me, I can totally understand the benefits of it. Yeah. Acupuncture is something that I think is, it's an amazing um, experience for a lot of people yeah. and I can see the benefit of it. It is not an amazing experience for me. Yeah. It makes me want to like pull my hair out. And maybe, maybe I need to go back now that I've come to a place of healing. Maybe I wasn't ready to, to handle that. Um, yeah. And I've also found that too. Cause yeah. yoga, when I first tried yoga, yeah. just enraged me. So they say the thing that you need the most is usually the thing you want the least. So whether in yoga itself, is that a yoga pose that your body's like, nope, it probably means you need to do that pose. Is that a certain type of, you know, modality of practice like acupuncture? If you're hating it, it probably need, means you need it. Okay. <laughs> I know. Trust me. I've got uh, those of my own. <laughs> Where I'm like, I don't want to. That makes so much sense. Yeah. I just thought maybe I wasn't ready for yoga because it just, it made me so mad the first time yeah. I tried it. Yep. But you're right. Now that I think back, yeah, it's probably what I needed most. Yeah. And it maybe try a different style. That's the beautiful thing about something like yoga too. And it could, and again, any modality really, but with yoga, there's so many different teachers and so many different styles. And so it's just a matter of finding one that feels good for you, the way you like they speak. That makes a big difference to me. If a teacher's just, I don't like the way their voice is going or the way they walk you through a class or the music they play, or I would rather do it at home. So I find one on YouTube. Like it's really just finding something that feels super, super good for you and then sticking with it. Yeah, that makes sense. That makes total sense. Yeah. So when is this launch happening for you? When is all this stuff happening? Like, yeah. Um, well, on August 18th with the new moon is when the Equus Facilitation Certification Program called the Equuspreneur Rising that is launching August 18th with the new moon. And I'm so excited about it. Even just every time I talk about it, it's like ear to ear smile. It's just like my little baby. And I'm so excited to share it with the world. I can totally see you glow every time you say it. Yeah. You're like a kid at Christmas. 
<laughs> That's how I feel. Totally. I think I'm even red in the face. Like I'm just so excited. It's so fun to be talking about it because it's bring, bringing it to life as I'm working on the curriculum and everything behind the scenes to be able to share and kind of talk about it and express what it's going to be and who it's for and put it out there in the world. It's like, this is really happening. Pinch me. I'm really doing this. I went from doing, getting my own equine therapy, like through my own experience. to now I'm offering that to people. This is crazy. This is so cool. And I'm just, I really hope other people will enjoy this work as much as I will and find the profound change and transformation and then help other people through that. So even if you don't want to create an Equus business, you can still take this program and learn about this work and go through the healing journey at the beginning. And we can just alter the last piece. If you're like, I'm not really you know, ready to talk about intuitive marketing and co-creating with Equus and all the different pieces that I have, then we'll just play around with that. But I'd love to welcome everyone to check out the program. So it's coming August 18th. I'm so excited for you. I really get a good feeling about this and just trusting my own intuition. And I think that's what really struck when, when you and I first started talking, I was just like, that is brilliant. So brilliant. Right. And, and horses are used in different kinds of therapy. I know in, in like special needs and stuff, they, they've got programs that have done wonders for, for kids yeah. who have different disabilities or issues. And so I'm so, oh, I'm so excited for you and seeing how excited you are. It's like Thank you. Watching you open presents at Christmas. <laughs> it's just so exciting to talk about. I just cannot wait to teach people about the language of horses and how they can help you in the world. It's just, it's so amazing. So I'm super pumped. I'm going to do um, probably a couple different live stream series through July just to talk more about it on my page. Um, and then I've, I've got a group called the Equispreneur Academy and in there, there'll be lots of launches and different things happening in that space. Uh, obviously this program, the Equispreneur Rising will be launched in there, but I also, the space moved from, I used to have it called Unbridled Mamas. That's how my journey started. I was unbridling, you know, from all the things holding me back and birthing the woman I am today. Oh, and so my group was called, uh, it was such a cool journey. So but I've shifted from Unbridled Mama to the Equuspreneur Academy, and then there'll be the Unbridled Mama containers will still be in there because I think I have enough of a community that resonates with that. So I'm still playing around with what the group space will look like, but it, all everything will be found in there. So I would love to welcome everybody into there, the Equuspreneur Academy. Lots of fun. <laughs> Excellent. And is there anywhere else they can look for you? Yes, they can find me on my personal page. I'm always out in the open in public and I've always got videos and different Equus teachings in our journey of all the different fun stuff that happens behind the scenes around here on there. Uh, my business page is actually called Alisa's Pharmacy and that's spelled with an F. And on there I prescribe course medicine, yoga medicine, nutritional medicine, moon and astrology medicine, sisterhood medicine, um, business medicine. I just kind of touch on all these different topics that are part of my journey from the farm. And then um, on Instagram, and it's just at alisa.shafer. Amazing. I will make sure to put that on the show description. Okay. So for anybody looking, that it will, it will be there. Um, because I know I can sit behind the wheel of a car listening to a podcast going, ah, yeah. I can't write any of that down. Agreed. Um, not that I ever think I could probably just listen to it again, but whatever. Uh, I'll make sure that it's, it's out there because I think this is going to be so amazing. Like I, I can think of two people specifically that I want to send, like I said, my friend, and there's a, a student of mine who wants to get into doing stuff with horses. She wants to have a ranch and this would be cool. up her alley, not just training riders and stuff like what she goes yeah. through. I think this is something in her wheelhouse because she is the most gentle, most amazing. Well, and I've known her since she was four and now she's this amazing woman off to university. Oh, wow. She's just succeeded in so many areas and she's had her own struggles. So to see what she's becoming, I'm like, oh, I can totally see her, you know, sort of taking something like this on for what she wants to do in her life as well. Um, and I'm just, I'm so excited to see where this journey takes you now that you're my newfound friend. Thank you so totally much. Follow. And I would love to, at some point, come out your way and, you know, do some of this work with you. Yes, please. And we can always do them over, over a Zoom call. Like, I can go out there with my phone and do a Zoom virtual session. It's just as amazing. It's not quite the same as being in space with them, but they, you still get to see all the behavior and communication, and we still unpack it. You still get all the insights and the aha moments. So that's always an option as well. 
All right, we're gonna talk because I want to do that. <laughs> okay, <laughs> good. I look that is so to amazing. You. Thank you so much for reaching out and for for doing this podcast. I'm so excited to get this out into the world because I think there are people out there that are going to think, hey, you know what? This is maybe a step I can take. You know, this yeah. might be a nice way for me to dip my toe in the waters and, and see how it goes. And it's that, that gentle, loving, unconditional. Mirroring from a horse. Yeah. From a horse. Yeah. I love it. I'm so honored and humbled to be here. Thank you so much. My pleasure. <laughs>